Today we're talking about getting started with online sales on your farm. And my name is Lisa Chase. I'm with University of Vermont Extension and the Vermont Tourism Research Center. I'm pleased to announce that Zach Smith from UVM Extension's Agricultural Business Program is with us today. He works directly with farmers, does a lot of one-on-one -on -one work, um, providing personalized business planning and help with the preparation of transfer succession plans, anything related to farm viability. We, and there's a whole team. I know many of you have worked with farm viability. There's a whole team that works together through UVM um, as well as other organizations here in Vermont. And we're lucky that Zach, before he came to UVM, has a specialty in digital marketing and entrepreneurial development. So he's been working with e-commerce for many years with a lot of different types of businesses. And it's, it's a welcome addition to this team because there's, you know, a lot of people have different skills related to <clears throat> production or other aspects of farming and business planning. And while Zach has, does have those skills, his focus is on e-commerce digital marketing. Before I turn it over to Zach, I just want to check in to see who's with us today. For those of you who are on the computer, you're gonna see that a poll should have appeared on your screen. The question is, it says, describe yourself, check all that apply. And you can choose between farmer, service provider extension, a nonprofit, nonprofit, a government agency, educator, or other. And if you do click other, if you wouldn't mind typing in the chat who you are, we'd love to see who's here joining with us for today. So I'll give folks another minute to fill out the poll and apologies to those of you who are on the phone and calling in and aren't connected by computer. Sorry, you don't have a chance to participate in the poll, but um, we'll read out what the results are, and we appreciate that you've registered so we get a sense of who's joining us. I've now shared the results from the poll, and it looks like we have uh, a good amount of farmers, 38% checked farmer. We've got about 18% service providers and extension. 16% are nonprofit agencies. We've got 7% educators. Wow, and a good chunk, 36% are others. I'm now gonna stop sharing the results. And I'm also gonna stop my screen share and turn it over to Zach who is gonna to talk to us today about e-commerce and answer many of the excellent questions that we got through the registration process. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so I'm just gonna pull up my screen and uh, get going here. Uh, but just let me know if everything is visible. Is everything? Yep, yep, okay. we see your screen, Zach. I don't okay, see great. you. Um, yeah, it looks like your video off is off, um, okay, which yeah. is your choice if you want to be <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be incognito or not. Um, but uh, I, I don't feel like screen. being. Yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I, I wanted you know just to introduce myself a little bit more. Um, I started you know getting into digital marketing around 2008 just by because of uh, out of necessity because I was working for a nonprofit in Latin America and. We, did, we couldn't hire anybody else to, uh, to get our website up and running. And my mother happened to be a computer science professor. So by osmosis, uh, she, I was, she was able to teach me about um, how, to, how to build websites. And uh, I started getting into e-commerce around uh, 2010, uh, developing a digital marketing department for a corporation. Um, and, uh, Eventually, I met a, a lovely girl from Vermont, and uh, she convinced me to move here. And I, uh, I started up my own consulting company for a while, uh, just basically meant for the the 
you know, rural entrepreneur, the small entrepreneur and uh, startup businesses. And uh, you know, eventually uh, um, I started actually just finding myself behind the desk for 10 to 12 hours a day. And I just realized I wanted to get back into agricultural consulting and seeing people. So I backed off a little as of a couple of years ago before and uh, joined uh, the uh, extension team. And uh, so that being said, uh, to get all of this started, it, it just a couple years of you know of not being 100% involved in the the digital world is like a couple decades. So you know, and because internet you know is constantly evolving. So what we're going to go over here is you know some general ideas on how to get started, how to make sure that you're uh, doing your best to make make some online sales, um, and so. We're going to discuss a variety of topics, and sometimes we might go a little too fast. Um, but you know, I want to cover just the basics this time, and uh, through one-on-one uh, -on -one communications, I can follow up with each of you uh, if you should have any questions. And then also, we intend on having some more uh, webinars uh, based on the specifics of, of the content of this presentation. So, um, <clears throat> so I'll get started. Um, uh, the UVM Extension Agricultural Business, uh, what we do is we engage with farms, forests, and maple enterprises with uh, using valuable planning and educational resources to promote a strong agricultural economy. Our experience team delivers one-on-one, -on -one, small group, and online learning opportunities that enhance decision-making and viability. Our programs and research provide direction for key stakeholders and to the improve business outcomes in a right. dynamic right. agriculture. No, sector. it's not there. Um, so when I talk about digital marketing, I'm going to talk about it quite a bit. Um, it's an umbrella term for all of your online efforts that you use to promote your business and make a sale. Um, what I like to do is to just describe digital marketing in the form of an, of an e ecosystem. Uh, you have your web, we're going to go over, you know, what, what it means to get started with a website, um, different types of traffic that come to your sites, uh, social networking, the digital marketing in action, and uh, e-commerce and analytics. Um, each one of these topics could take an hours to explain, but so you know, if you'll forgive me for, for going a little quickly over each one of them, uh, I'll make sure that I follow up with, with in detail in the future. Um, so just diving right in, uh, when you're putting your website together, um, there's, it's really, really important to understand what, you know, what you're going to do, what it's going to look like before you even get started. That's why I'm constantly going to say that getting a digital marketing plan together is extremely important before you even get started. So as you're putting your plan together, you, you want to put up your domain name, which is, uh, which is, uh, basically uh, how people find you online. I'm pretty sure almost all of us know, you know, it's that www, uh, which is actually kind of going away now, but you know, something, myfarm.com. Um, it's very, very important that you make sure that your domain name is relevant to your business. If it's not your business's name, because it's very, very long, you just, you, you want to maybe shorten it up a little, um, you know, try to get as much information into that little, little, little bit of uh, uh, you know uh, you know maybe 10 to 10 to 20 characters uh, and make sure that it's relevant to your business it's relevant to what the content you're gonna have on your site um, I have you know I've had people just uh, just come up with a, a domain name that has no that significance to their to their business and that actually hurts in the long run and I'll explain a little bit about it but it just basically you want it to be something that everybody's going to remember when you're going out to farmers markets or, you know, when they open again. Uh, and uh, when you're networking, you want it something something that everybody's going to remember. Um, a host is where your site basically is stored. It's it's um, it, it's basically all the files that go into portraying your your site on the internet. Um, some of the most you know famous hosts out there, I would say. Uh, I mean, the, the most famous I would say right now is GoDaddy, um, and GoDaddy has always been. Uh, if you're going to build your own site and if you're going to host your own site, which we'll talk about, I'd say GoDaddy is very reliable. It's the reason why, you know, it's the most popular uh, host out there right now. 
um, it is extremely popular. I, I, and I just say like some of the negatives are is that sometimes the sites run a little slower on GoDaddy um, when they're hosted there. And I would have to say that their customer service, although while it's really, really great, it does take a while to get online with them and like actually get them on the phone. Um, I've been using over the past couple of years, SiteGround. Um, and uh, I use GoDaddy and site, SiteGround at the same time. And I would have to say that SiteGround, my sites are a lot faster. They're a bit more secure and, uh, and their customer service is a lot, lot quicker. So those are my two top recommendations if you were to build your own website and, and seek a host. Um, so you know, going into your website, talking more about your website, um, your, your, your choices really have to be based on what resources you have. And as we know, in the, in the, not, not too many farmers have a lot of time and not too many farmers have a lot of money right now. And so you have to be really, really honest with yourself about what you want to accomplish and how you're gonna, going to accomplish that. So therefore, you know, writing up a business uh, or a digital marketing plan is really, really important. Um, you're really going to have two basic options that we'll talk a little bit about. Um, you're going to have your custom options where you build your website from the ground up, uh, host your web, you know, get you, you buy your domain, you get your hosting package, you start building your website, um, you know, something like, uh, you know, building it on, on, uh, on uh, WordPress or something like that. While uh, WordPress or Wix or, you know, anything like that, you know, you can, you can build your website and do all that. It does take a little bit more effort and a lot more resources. It's going to take time to put everything together. Um, then you have your packaged options, which are like, uh, w which we'll go over, but they're like uh, Shopify, big commerce. And then if you're talking about farm, farm specific stuff, um, Harvey, Farmigo, Barn to Door, those kind of those kind of offerings are already prepared for you to get up and running as soon as possible. Um, the only difference, you know, I would say that um, a major difference between a custom option doing it yourself and then a packaged option having someone else do it for you is that there will be charges, of, you know, ongoing charges with with your packaged options, um, and it's just really important to you know to list out those prices and find out what makes sense to you. Um, so getting into, we'll, we'll revisit a few of my uh, suggestions on websites in a, a little bit, but when, you wanna, when you're getting your website going, you have to understand what types of traffic are coming to your website. Um, all of the major search engines, what they have are uh, search, search engine consoles, which what they do is they actually go out into the internet and index all websites. Um, by indexing a website, they find relevant information so that it's searchable, so that when someone goes to Google and says, uh, you know, maple syrup producer near me, your website could, should, should pop up um, because it, it's been indexed. Um, some services are, will do your indexing for you. Other times, you have to look up on how to submit your website to search engine consoles to be indexed. Um, and that sounds very, very complicated, but just going to Google, to Yahoo, if it, Google, I know, I focus mainly on Google because they manage like 95% of worldwide traffic. So that's something that I would focus on in the beginning. But you go straight to Google and you say, how, how to submit, submit my site to Google search engine console, and they'll walk you right through it. Um, it's very, very self-explanatory. Um, so when you do that, you're focusing on creating uh, potential organic traffic to your website. That's like someone, you know, organic traffic is when someone goes and they're looking for something that you have and your name pops up at the top of it or your website pops up at the top of the list. Um, organic traffic, when you're starting your website up, it does take a while to actually um, to increase or to build upon itself. But when it does, it's actually exponential. And, uh, and usually around like around three months after publishing your website, you'll start getting really good growth, organic growth. And that's a sign of a healthy, healthy website and a healthy business. 
Um, direct traffic is when someone comes to your website because they know about it, because they've heard about it before, you've met them, and they go, they just type it in www.myfarm.com and they go straight to your site or maybe, maybe they already have like a bookmark because they order from you so often. Um, so that's, that's your direct traffic. Direct traffic is also another sign of a healthy, a healthy business, healthy networking. Um, referral traffic comes from other sites. Uh, say you want to get your website listed on, uh, you know, from maybe a group of, you know, uh, you know, a formalized farmer's market, a digital farmer's market or something like that. Um, referral traffic is great, you know, when you're networking with other sites with, within your industry, within your vertical. Um, email traffic is, is pretty self-explanatory, and I'm going to go into detail about it because it is uh, the most important type of traffic, in my opinion. So I'm gonna talk about that a little, in a little bit more detail. And then your social traffic is from the social media. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that too. Uh, and so social networking, uh, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an iffy issue, especially amongst the agricultural community about getting into um, because it does take time and a lot of people don't find value in it. Um, it can be distracting. Um, there is just there are just a lot of reasons not to do so, social, you know, be involved in social networking. But I, I feel that it is. It really. I've found a few farms, especially around here, that have done uh, a really great job at actually linking their social networking activity to increasing sales, especially new sales. So. Um, the, be the easiest ones to get started with are your Facebook um, and your Instagram, which are both related. Um, you can actually, when you're getting into Facebook advertising, actually, you can, you, can, you can do your advertising for Facebook and Instagram all in one platform, all in one dashboard. So it's uh, pretty easy to get into that. So Facebook is great for your general, you know, getting a presence online. It's also great for uh, customer service. Sometimes people just want to find out a little bit more about your business really quickly. And Facebook can uh, you know, offer uh, people the ability to contact you and get more information. Um, the reason why I think social networking is also really important is because um, there, is a di there, there is that distance between the farm and the, and the consumer or the client. And we can, you can take advantage of that, uh, of social networks to, to make everybody, uh, you know, understand a little bit more about your story so that can lead to a better sale. You know, with understanding, there's, a, there's more ability to uh, influence a sale. Um, so Facebook does that great. Um, Instagram, Instagram is more of, you know, something that like is, could be great to explain a little bit more about your, your farm story. Um, LinkedIn is a platform that I actually really like um, because it, it stays quite professional. Um, it's good for you know your company pro profile, but it's also good for networking with other um, other companies that might be within your industry, uh, companies, universities, um, job seekers, even. So link, LinkedIn is something that I would say that it's worth getting into. Um, Twitter, Twitter's great for, for announcements. Uh, it, it does, you know, if you're going to only focus on two or three, I would say Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. But if you want to get into more like activities, I would say use Twitter. Um, and then Pinterest. Pinterest actually has turned into a valuable uh, um, network to be involved in, especially when you're getting into, uh, if your target market is a person that likes to be like to do the do it yourself or the gardener or the um, cook it, you know, do it yourself cooking. Pinterest could be a way, way to, way to um, expose your, uh, your company to, to new, new clients. Um, so is it all worth it? I would say yes, but um, you know, be honest with yourself. Um, are you going to be able to dedicate a consistent amount of time to utilizing these networks? Because, if you're not consistent, it, do, it doesn't look good. So you got to remember, like, you know, you should be posting a couple times at least. If you can post a couple times a week, I'd say do it. Um, is social networking absolutely necessary? No, but 
but I do believe that it can uh, lead to some sales. So talking about advertising, um, advertising gets a little more complicated. Uh, it's, it's a little more complica complicated than your traditional advertising, but it is something that you can really get some tangible results from. I would suggest uh, trying out Facebook's advertising platform first uh, and uh, see how it feels. Um, it's really easy to um, utilize their tools to actually target. Um, I think the best targeting uh, options are, are available through Facebook and Instagram. Uh, when I say targeting, you can actually geo-target someone down to their down to the zip code. Uh, so you, you're only showing your announcements within the zip code. I think that is extremely important for farmers uh, to pay attention to. You can also do it by age and by interest of these people. So I really I do encourage people to try Facebook uh, um, advertising, but just make sure that you're following all of their instructions and make sure that you're you know where you're at, when and where your ads are being shown. Um, Google, Google, like I mentioned, has a very, very extensive network um, that you can advertise on. I just feel as for, for a starter, for a, uh, someone who's getting into the, the digital world, it could be a little confusing. Um, they do have excellent online edu education uh, sources on how to set up your advertising campaigns on Google but it does get a little complicated and uh, it could lead to a headache. But if you have someone who's a little bit more savvy, uh, computer savvy, uh, maybe the younger crowd, um, then yeah, give it a whirl. But um, it, 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 I would say that it, 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 the learning curve is a lot, lot tougher with Google and other search engines. Uh, all other search engines do offer advertising, um, but you know, as we're saying, as we're talking about just getting started up, I would focus on Google. Um, why should you advertise online? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, it, you're just you're you're going to be able to open up your markets. Um, and I think that it's what what I think is so great about having a digital presence presence oh, is I'm that it really levels the playing field. That, or um, not in a lot of pain. Yeah, it really levels the playing field for all farms. Um, so everybody has a has a chance to compete and. Uh, I do suggest that you you start off with like you know maybe just a hundred dollars and see what that does for you. Um, see if it leads to sales online. Um, as far as advertising offline, I I feel that everything that you're doing when you're interacting with customers should have your web presence, your social, your your website, your social media links. You should have that printed out on all of the stuff that you're handing out to people, um, even including your packaging. So. Um, yeah, definitely make sure that you, you're advertising your online presence offline. Um, the reason why I think that uh, email marketing is so effective is, uh, is actually through analytics. And analytics have shown that, um, that email marketing has the highest conversion rate of all types of marketing. When I say conversion rate, uh, what, what I mean is, um, in marketing, digital marketing, a conversion is when someone comes to our website and does something that we intend them to do, uh, which is normally make a sale. Um, so um, on, when, when you get up and running, and we'll talk about this a little bit at the end, you will be able to analyze where your sales came from, what type of traffic they came from, uh, it, be it direct referral, social, organic, or email marketing. Um, it's effective because you've already basically, you've already gotten someone to say yes to, to uh, receiving communications from you. When I say that, I mean, someone has come to your site or got or met with you and given you their email address and said, yes, please contact me. Um, so what I like, I, 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 I like to call that a micro agreement. They're already saying yes, they're already, there is this possibility for a sale. So what you wanna do is market to them uh, and you know, offer them something via email, um, you know, with announcements, with discounts, with you, know, you name it, just something to influence them to click on the link in your email and go to your website and buy what you're offering. Um, when I look at inbound marketing software uh, uh, for email marketing, 
I think that MailChimp does a great job. Um, I think that Constant Contact does a, does a great job. I've been using both of those for, for about uh, 10 years. Uh, for the last nine years, though, I've been using, and almost on a daily basis, I use HubSpot. Um, all three of these, uh, of these types of software, MailChimp, Constant Contact, and HubSpot, will integrate with your website. Um, and all of them are very, very self-explanatory. They, 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 they walk you through getting started. They have excellent customer service, um, and they, they have a, a, an excellent knowledge base of, uh, for ideas on how to run your email marketing campaigns, how to integrate email marketing into your overall marketing plan. So I definitely suggest checking out all of them, seeing what makes sense to you. I like HubSpot just because um, it's, it's functionally one of my favorite things to work with because I can go in and easily see what my clients are doing, um, how many times I've contacted them, if they're coming to my website, um, and if they're, if they're you know, checking out pages on my website, if they're buying certain products, and, and it's, it's just easier to segment and really pay attention to your clients by using HubSpot. So I'm a great, I'm a very, very big proponent of HubSpot. Um, hey, Zach, would yeah. you mind if I, before you move on, uh, we've, we've had um, a few questions that have shown up in chat. And um, if you don't mind taking a pause and I'll ask one specifically about email marketing while you're on that screen. Sure. So one question is, um, is there a way to obtain email addresses of people you're targeting? For example, farm to table interest, um, targeted list to buy or share between farms. Um, well, there technically, uh, <laughs> this the, there's a gray area on the um, the the I don't I wouldn't say legality of creating your email marketing list, but. The first, first and foremost, you want to have permission to communicate with this person. Um, and so um, what MailChimp actually does a great job of doing, they do double verification of whether this contact um, is a part of your email marketing list. They'll actually email this new contact and say, hey, do you want to receive communications from, from myfarm.com? Um, and if they say yes, then you know, go for it. Um, email marketing list building is, is a very tough task um, because, like I said, you have to have someone actually give you their, their email address in order to technically and formally communicate with them. Um, other people, uh, and I say this is, this is, it is quite rampant, but um, people do go out and try to get email lists from other sources. Um, it, in the European Union, it is illegal now to do stuff like that. Um, and uh, California is in, uh, enacting some laws on that, and it will be uh, illegal in the future, I believe, in the United States to, uh, to create lists like that. Um, it's uh, how it's enforced, I don't know, but if you want to you know, get, get in good standing with these email service providers, which are like MailChimp, Constant Contact, and HubSpot, they will monitor you, and they will, if, if people are heavily unsubscribing or if you have a high bounce rate, you will uh, get penalized through your email service provider. Um, so my greatest suggestion is, is, is ask permission first, permission to contact your, uh, your clients or your potential email list. Thanks, Zach. And we've also, um, for those of you who can see the chat on your computer, we got some good suggestions um, from, from other people working on farms. I'm um, saying, you know, one way is to form your email list organically through interaction with customers. Um, that way, the that way the people you're emailing know you, and they're going to open up your your emails. Um, another suggestion is cross prom promoting with partner farms or businesses um, to build your list. Again, you know, in in a way where people know who you are and are much more likely to open your email. Yeah, and, and we've got. I don't want to. Yeah, go ahead, Zach. Yeah, and if you're if you're list building with you know w without permission, you also have the you run the risk of you know negative negatively affecting your business by you know just creating that impression that like if someone gets an email from you, they don't know who you are, and then that's a negative impression um, that has a lot a lot to do with not just 
email marketing, but online messaging in general. Be very, very careful with what you're saying and who you're saying it to. Really understand your audience because what I like to say is you can't unsee something once it's on a screen, you know? So you, uh, you have to make sure that you're, you're keeping your company in, in mind. The image of your company is very, very important and it can get easily manipulated online. So be very careful with your message, messaging. We have some other questions that have come in on chat. And if we have time, um, we'll circle back to those, but I don't want to derail yeah. Zach too much from, um, from what he's planning to say next. But what I will say is um, some of the email questions have come in directly to me, which is fine. And we're going to share um, everything with Zach afterwards. And he'll be taking some time to go through the questions and, and other folks who are knowledgeable will, will weigh in as well. But I will say, um, since we have a lot of people on this um, converse, part of this conversation who are very knowledgeable and have, who have been chiming in um, on chat, I encourage you, if you have questions, and, and again, you're on the computer, sorry for those of you who are on the phone, but if you're on the computer and you have access to chat, type your questions publicly to the whole chat group and you know those of you who have answers from experience or you know your own knowledge in this area as, as service providers feel free to chime in and we can do some crowdsourcing even as zach is presenting yeah so definitely. zach i'll um turn it back to you now and um thank you very much i'll try not to interrupt too much but if there's something that seems you know real relevant i may jump in and then hopefully we'll have some more time at the end as well yeah, definitely. I want to. I want to have some. I want to designate some time for anything direct questions towards me. And uh, and right now, I would love for you know people to start thinking about how they could share with the with our with our audience. You know, something maybe of, of their personal experience with any of the topics that I've been discussing, or you know, something a topic that I perhaps you know I missed. Uh, because the best the best advice is going to come from you know someone with you know from your neighbor, from your someone working in your own industry. So. Uh, so moving on to e-commerce, um, you know, it's about making that sale online uh, and, uh, you know, what's necessary, you basically have to have your store, you have to have a payment gateway, which is, you know, a way for someone to make a payment and connect that payment to your bank account. Um, and when it, when it comes to this, security is extremely, extremely important. Um, there are a lot of security measure, measures that need to go and need to be taken into place. Uh, that starts with you know consulting like whoever is building your website, however you're building your website. Always think about how um, what security measures you're going to take to basically um, encrypt that information that you're receiving from your clients um, because there are there are plenty of bad characters out there in the digital world. So you want to make sure whoever is creating your website is making sure that you have a, a fully secure website that usually involves buying a, an SSL certificate. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not super expensive, but it is a way of uh, securely encrypting your information on your website so that uh, you know, the bad characters can't get to it. Um, so talking about platforms, um, this is a huge topic right now with farmers right now. Everybody wants to know, you know, what platform is the best, what, what platform is the easiest, what platform for this, what platform for that. Um, I'll talk about a few platforms that um, I really like that I have experience with, um, which are like the, the uh, you know, you have your plug and play kind of uh, websites that are like Shopify. I can't say enough about how great Shopify is um, just for getting up and started. I mean, people can get up and started just within a couple of days with Shopify. Um, why it's it's very easy to pick up. It's very easy to learn, um, and their customer s service is outstanding. I, I feel, um, and you know, with all of these options, and there are many many options out there that are great. Really look at how their customer service is, because and also understand that you're going to be spending some time with customer service. You're going to have you're going to have specific questions that you just don't understand, or you you just it. it, it there is going to be um, you know, a, a point in the beginning of getting, that, getting started where you're gonna have to call these guys up and I highly encourage that you do it. Um, and these are, some of the, these are some of the sites that I feel or these are some of the software companies that I feel that really you know, do a great job at getting, 
people up and running. Um, so Sh Shopify and Big Commerce, I would say, are the two that I've I've been working with for almost both for uh, about a decade, and uh, I really really like those those platforms. Um, I also you know like the the people who build their websites with uh, with WordPress, for example, need to integrate an e-commerce component to their websites, which is normally uh, WooCommerce. Um, I have a lot of experience with that too, but. The, the deal with WordPress and, Word, uh, and WooCommerce is the fact that it's open source uh, um, formatting. So there are a lot of changes and updates that, you're, that, that you constantly have to do on your website to make sure that one, that it's running properly and two, that it is secure. Um, so if you're gonna go the, you know, the, the build your own website route, you have to understand that you're probably going to be spending much more time in maintenance mode, uh, maintaining your website than you would if you were going to use one of these uh, the kind of like pre prepackaged deals like Shopify, Big Commerce, um, and uh, you know I just recently uh, started uh, interacting with a company called Gray's Cart, uh, and they're out of Northern Indiana, and actually they um, they created their own platform specifically meant for farmers. Uh, and I found that to be very, very unique, and I thought, found it to be really interesting what they were doing. Um, and you know, met with them online, did a few uh, webinars with them, and they actually had like a, a cousin graduate from from university in Chicago, and uh, what, you know, was a was had a background in coding and programming, and he he built that particular uh, platform just for their business. And now I think they're in nearly three hundred, uh, nearly three hundred. Uh, Farmers throughout the United States are using that platform. Um, recently, uh, the the extension network, as well as other service providers throughout the state, um, have been putting together some other resources for people that are doing or intending more uh, to do like the CSA style um, of website uh, of e-commerce. Um, I'm not very well versed in that, but we do have. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there. And uh, we, uh, we, we plan on sharing those with everybody. Um, perhaps some people could uh, chime in when we have some sharing time to talk about their experience with these models. Some of them are Farmigo, Barn to Door, Harvey. Um, I've been hearing a lot of great things about Harvey um, from personal contacts, but every, like I've been mentioning, everything has its own uh, you know, uh, pros and cons. So. I would really love at the end of this to have some people to uh, share about what their experiences have been with these uh, with these platforms. Um, more to consider, uh, you know, is really the the fact that you have to create a digital marketing plan before you get into this because you want to put to, you want to understand what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be doing it, and who you're going to be talking to. Um, Content marketing is what you is is basically everything. All of your outbound communications, what you how how you're describing your company, what makes it different from everybody else. Um, you also want to pay attention to your buyer's journey. You literally, I encourage people to break out a whiteboard or a big piece of paper and just write out how one person, how a certain client of yours or someone who buys a certain pro product of yours, how they start from finding out about your company to actually making a purchase to making more purchases like draw it out and then by looking at everything you're going to find ways of communicating to them um, and so it's very very important um, i will i will also say that we will be creating a digital marketing plan template that should be coming out very soon that we want to share with all of you um, it's uh it's it's just being refined right now so uh it's going to be something that you can do. You, you will be addressing content marketing and buyer's journeys within that. Um, like I'm saying, putting it all together, first things first, make sure you have a plan before you jump in. Um, and, and make sure you understand that you have to make the decision of whether to do it on your own or to hire someone. Um, there are excellent, excellent, excellent web designers and developers out there, and the field is constantly growing. Um, but there are also a lot of not that great uh, web designers out there. So what I would say, if you're going to go out and, and, and hire someone, which I think you should, um, but make sure 
that you that you hire someone or work with someone that you have personal references from. Uh, it's don't just go out and hire the first person you see online. Um, make sure that you can, you know, get recommendations from people. If you have someone else in mind, if you have a friend in mind that has a great website, you go, go ask them what, who, who did they enlist? Who, who services did they, did they enlist? Um, because the, you know, getting that verbal recommendation is really, really important because you want to be able to trust this person. You want to be able to, you know, contact them, at, you know, with all of your inquiries, you want, it, it's, it's a long process. So you want to make sure that you vet them out and before you get started. Um, and also look at that young crowd because I mean, the youngsters, you know, the, they're really, really impressive with what they're picking up nowadays. Um, and then putting it all together, you got to measure your, your performance. Um, why do you, why do you want to measure your performance? It's because I consider a website to be a salesperson. It's a part of my team. Um, I have to have that website functioning properly. I have to understand what's going well, what's going bad for it. Um, and I got to make sure that, yeah, it's, it's creating sales for me. Otherwise it's a big waste of time. So I always put together key performance indicators. Um, Google analytics does that for you. Um, every, everybody who has a website should install Google analytics on their website. It is free. Um, and, uh, if you don't know how to do it, talk to someone who is creating or has created your website and find a way to get a Google analytics, um, account and code onto your website because what that's going to do is basically analyze the health of your site where people are coming from like those traffic the referral email social organic direct it's going to tell you where you know what your traffic numbers are looking like if people are spending time on your site and if people are ultimately making purchases so it sounds it also sounds very very daunting to get into something like this but like I mentioned before, Google does an excellent job at explaining what its products are and how to use them. Um, they'll even offer like they'll, they'll even offer training in Google Analytics. Um, I think it is highly important to get involved with that. Um, so I, I can't recommend enough to you integrate. If you're going to integrate something into your website, it better be Google Analytics. Um, so yeah, here we are. Um, uh, uh, I am more than available. Uh, by email at zachary.smith, I'm sorry, zachary.m.smith at uvm.edu. Um, and perhaps we can open it up for a, a few questions and, uh, and I'd definitely like to get some, uh, some, some people to share their experiences too, uh, if they feel like they, they'd like to do that. Thanks, Zach. There was, while you were presenting, there was a lot of great commentary going on in the chat with um, some questions and also some answers. And Rose Wilson, if you don't mind me um, picking on you for a moment while people continue to um, type questions into the chat, um, Rose Wilson is just a tremendous source of information. And would you be willing to unmute yourself and chiming in for a bit with um, some of what you've been sharing on chat and some of your own experience working with farms and with e-commerce? Sure. Hi, guys. Um, Hi, so I was just, hey, I was just chiming in. Um, a couple questions I often get asked is understanding the demographics. Um, so the first comment that I had was, if you don't have time to do all of the different social media platforms, which is the social media platform you might want to focus on. And through the work that I've been doing with farms, what I've discovered is um, the farms that are selling into the city. So for example, if you've got cheese and you're selling cheese into Boston, we've found that it's most important for you to be on Instagram because um, the people in the city like to see pictures. They don't want a lot of wordiness. Um, and they tend to be millennials. Um, and we actually have gotten that feedback from the retailers. The stores say, if you have to pick one, pick Instagram. If you are in Vermont and your focus is to actual Vermonters, uh, we typically recommend Facebook. Facebook skews to an older, um, less techie demographic. And so you'll find that predominantly, um, if you're up here, uh, that would probably you can do Instagram if you want to, but 
um, if you had to pick one, I'd say Facebook. Um, those two tend to be more, if you had to pick between the three, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, um, pick between Facebook and Instagram. And of course, there's always gonna be new things coming out. Um, the other question that I've been getting recently, especially as more folks have been having to turn towards online delivery and online uh, commerce, is that they're starting to exceed their MailChimp and their constant contact free um, volume of, of what they can do. And so they're having to upgrade. And so I was starting to research with folks, what are the other options that they can be um, potentially using for email services that might have more functionality still in a free version or in a lower cost version than MailChimp and Constant Contact. So I sent out, um, it was <laughs> using the chat function, I was limited on how many words I could put into each chat. So I just listed them as one, two, and three. Zach had already talked about one, which is HubSpot. The other two are um, Send Pulse, and um, there was a third one, um, which I'm trying to find my. Send in blue? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so if you look, what I tried to do was just summarize the cost benefits of each. Um, and actually, there's really not much of a cost because I was showing you the different functionality you could get with the free versions of them. But all three of those have more functionality at the free level than MailChimp and Constant Contact, and all three get good reviews. Um, so those were a couple of the quick things that I was just trying to let people know. The other big thing in terms of um, software platforms, I find Harvey a little clunky, but we do see all of our food hubs, actually basically every food hub in New England pretty much is using local food marketplace. So that one would be one to look at because we know that the food hubs are using it. They've had good experience. They've all been on it for several years. Um, and I think that, that, oh, the other thing I was gonna mention was primarily that Gray's Cart and Barn to Door, if you do have livestock sales, so if you're doing um, packaged meat, retail packaged meat, the reason that those two have really popped up as popular is because what we've been finding with folks who have retail meat for sale online is that your package never is exactly like one pound or two pounds or five pounds. Um, so it's really hard to bill somebody and tell them exactly what they're getting. And those two platforms in particular have created it um, easy on the buyer end to understand their card is gonna be charged once you've picked out which package they're getting and it lets them know it's gonna be somewhere you know, around a pound for a pound of ground beef, but it helps them quickly convey that they don't know exactly what they're gonna be charged, but they're gonna be charged something. Um, so that's why those two have started to pop up, uh, especially for the livestock uh, folks. Thanks, Rose. That actually, there was a question that came up a couple times and you may have just answered it, but there may be a more um, expansive answer. And the question is, how do you best integrate shipping costs into sales, especially on variable, variable, variably priced and weighted items? I'll let Rose or Zach or anyone answer that. Yeah, I think it's a really, I mean, that's, that's one of the most popular questions I've been getting particularly like this week, actually. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, I, would, I would say like it, it's, well, as far as calculating it, if you're using any of these platforms, the ready-made platforms, they're gonna explain to you, you know, a lot of them do integrate like support with shipping, uh, even shipping and labeling and such. Um, so yeah, it is a, it is a big issue to, to, to take, uh, you know, to consider on the planning side, you just gotta make sure that you put, like when you put planning your projections, et cetera, make sure that you, you understand that you gotta, you're gonna have some costs involved in making not just the the transaction happen, but also the um, the, the the shipping getting it to the client. Um, so I highly encourage people to write it down and understand you know what your costs are going to be should you make a a sale. As far as you know, like the the individualized sales, um, I don't have experience right now doing that. Um, I would love if someone could raise their hand or if someone out there does have experience with like you know 
you know, the different variety of cuts and all that stuff and the packaging and uh, what their experience has been so far. This is Janet. Well, if anyone, yeah. This is Janet. Go ahead, Green Janet. Field. Great. From Greenfield, Greenfield Highland Beef. And sometimes you get to make lemonade out of lemons. And one of the outcomes of having to do the pre-order only farmer's market and figure out how to make that so that there is no exchange of money and that people know exactly what to come with in a check or cash in an envelope. I had to figure out a price per cut and I never thought that I would be able to do that. It is an average and I would say probably on some pieces of Delmonico's date, I might not have made as much as I would have if I did it by the pound, but maybe on some of them, I might have made a few pennies more but I'm selling the beef and I'm selling it in a way that works right now. And it actually is so much easier. Someone writes in, they want four Delmonico's, they want one package of ground beef, uh, they want a package of short ribs. And I can tell them without even going out to the freezer and out even getting out the calculator and putting up an order exactly what their price is going to be when they get to the market. So, you know, maybe at some point we'll be able to go back to an individual package and a price per pound and add up each item and come to a more exact cost um, for production. But it's it's worked well, and that's what we're doing right now um, for our direct sales. Our wholesale market to the co to the co-ops is still by the pound, but to be able to get these products out and have people locally have access to this food, we had to go to a price per package. And even though it was very scary, I would recommend that it can work and it seems to be very comfortable for the consumers. Thanks, Janet. That's, I really appreciate you sharing that about how you're, I mean, like you said, it can be scary, but <laughs> I think these are scary times and it's impressive how, how you and other farms are, you know, quickly making decisions and doing things you'd never think you'd have to do um, in order to respond and continue to feed your consumer, feed your community, um, you know, ship your products and, and stay viable. So thank you for sharing that, Janet. You're welcome. Just going back to the email question, I'll just tag along is that I have been for years saying I needed to move to an email option and use that as marketing and through inertia or alligator fighting and other things getting done, that didn't happen. That's happened now because I had to do it. And um, basically, I have been collecting emails. <laughs> Fortuitously, uh, my husband said, let's put out a little bowl and ask people to put their emails in and we'll give away one, five, one package to five people at the end of the market of ground beef. And so we started collecting emails that way. We'll pick those out and give people a free package of ground beef and got quite a few that way. And then I posted on front porch forum and the Facebook plain field people and I asked them to email me with their order. So again, the people who emailed me are people who are interested in hearing back from me. And I am very apprehensive about sending out emails to people unsolicited. And so I've been able to build, I probably don't, I probably got about 50 emails and every single one of them are somebody who is interested in our, in purchasing our product. And um, so that's what I've started doing and that's how I started collecting them. And it's been incredibly effective. And again, it was the only solution that really would have helped us get product out uh, to retail at this point. That's great. Thank you, Janet. I want to share a comment that Rose wrote in the, uh, this is Rose Wilson, who was speaking a little earlier that she put in the chat that for folks who are currently doing delivery and not char charging, um, farms that she is, she is working with are now including a gratuity 
for example, a $5 gratuity as one of the things people can purchase in their online cart. Um, and this has been working and being used to defray the delivery costs. Because I know, you know, something that's challenging for a lot of people is while you as farmers need to make a living, you also are very um, aware of the needs of, of your customers and other people um, who are really struggling and um, dealing with food insecurity right now. And we're actually going to talk about that at our, um, during our next um, conversation, which I'm going to move to in just one moment. But first, um, Zach, if you wouldn't mind, stop sharing your screen, and then I can share my screen again. And while Zach is um, stopping his share, I've just put up another poll. Again, apologies to those on the phone who can't see it. For those of you who are on your computer, the question is, how likely are you to start planning for your e-commerce business? Um, one answer is already planning slash implementing e-commerce. Then there's very likely, maybe, not likely, and not applicable. Maybe you're you know, supporting other farms and you don't have your own business. So we're going to give people a couple of minutes to um, just fill in that poll and then I'll share the results. And in the meantime, let's see if I can uh, go ahead and share my screen. Okay, um, I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. And what we see is over half, 52% are already planning or implementing e-commerce. We've got about 20% saying they're very likely to start planning for their e-commerce business. About 16% say maybe. <laughs> Nobody said not likely. Those are the people who didn't join today. Um, and about 11% said that it's not applicable. And now what I'm going to do is put up one final screen, which talks about the, what we have coming next. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is, Zach joined us as part of a series an online, of online conversations about sourcing and selling food during COVID-19. And we are fortunate, oops, um, we are fortunate that next week on Tuesday, April 21st, changing up the timing a little bit because that's what works best for um, Jenny Porter from NOFA Vermont and her colleague Emmett Mosley, who's here today. On Tuesday, April 21st at 2 p.m., they're going to be talking about accepting SNAP and EBT um, as direct market farms. And Emmett, are you, I think you're here with us. Would you be willing to just say a couple words about what you're planning to cover next week? Hey everyone, um, thanks Lisa. So this is really a, an introductory um, kind of workshop for folks who maybe you were selling at a farmer's market uh, and it's unclear if that market's gonna go forward um, or if you're just sort of pivoting to doing direct consumer sales when you haven't done that before. Um, so maybe folks aren't aware that um, even just as a, as a direct market farmer, um, you are eligible, uh, many people are eligible to um, receive um, payments through SNAP um, or Three Squares Vermont, as it's called here. Um, so this is really just an introductory workshop uh, to talk about the process of applying uh, to become an eligible SNAP retailer. Um, and we're going to go through some of the um, grant uh, and reimbursement programs that are existing currently uh, to help people pay for the cost of equipment um, and transaction fees. So you can, uh, you can find that link right at the same website um, where you found this one. Thanks, Emmett. Looking forward to having you and uh, Jenny with us next week. Um, then we've got more, more um, conversations in the works. Um, one relevant for a lot of the conversation today is meat and dairy direct sales with Jen Colby. Um, and that will be on April 19th, 12 noon, moving back to the Wednesday. And we're planning um, 
planning for more. Um, one idea that's come up that we're talking about is farm stand guidelines, having a few farmers on who are doing a tremendous job of creating no contact farm stands or um, delivery type options, as well as talking more about food access. To register um, for all of these Pro, for all of these conversations. And also, if you'd like to access the recording or the slides or any of the resources that have come up today, um, go to the website, which is go.uvm.edu slash food. I'm gonna be sending out an email once the recording of today's conversation is posted, which likely will be by sometime tomorrow, I'll send out an email to all of you that will include this link, as well as registration information for upcoming conversations. And what we'll do too is we'll pull from the chat box and pull from the conversation today, some of the links that came up that may be most useful. And we'll put those at the bottom of the email. I'll also include Zach's contact information. You'll have my contact information. And if there are other folks out there who are willing to share contact information and um, serve as resources as well. Whether your job is officially ag service provider or a lot of you as farmers are stepping up and doing so much to support the, the farming community. Um, if you're willing to share your contact info and um, serve as a resource, we'll be happy to add you to the email address. So I do wanna try to keep things on time. So with that, I wanna thank all of you for joining us today. And if you're still with us, there's, let's see, I've got one last poll, which basically asks how you wanna stay in touch. Just wanna, I know a lot of people are spending a lot of time on their computers and we weren't sure what, how interested people would be in these online conversations, giving that, the planting season is starting and you know everybody's busy with a lot of things. So I've just put up one last poll that says, how do you wanna get information about farming, markets and distributing Vermont food in the time of COVID-19? Options are online conversations like today, podcast, Facebook, emails, website, phone conversations, printed materials and other. And again, if you type something in to other, if you select other, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment and typing that into chat. And also at any time, feel free to put any questions in chat. As we mentioned earlier, we're gonna be sorting through the questions that came in through your registration, through the registration process, and also during this conversation. And I know there's a number of questions we didn't get to, some of them are very personalized for your farm, in which case Zach or somebody else will be reaching out to you directly. Otherwise, if it's a more general question, we'll either address it in the email that I send out to everyone, or we'll end up um, putting together a resource, a Q&A type resource, and we'll make that available. I'm ending the poll and sharing the results, showing that about 87% of the people selected online conversations today, like today, as a way to get information. Um, we had about 70% with emails. Let's see, 23% for podcasts, which reminds me that I should mention that Zach does have a podcast that covers some of what we talked about today, but also um, some other issues related to e-commerce as well. I'll make sure I send that in the email that I send to all of you. Let's see, about 10% like Facebook, 20% like websites, 7% like phone conversations, and about 20% like printed materials. Well, we've gone a little bit over, and I want to thank all of you for sticking with us today. And I'm looking forward to... <laughs> Connecting again next week, and in the meantime, I'll you know we can continue to stay in touch by email.